What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about breaks. In particular, in particular, my favorite ones. I'm actually gonna give you a tutorial on exactly how to perform this simple yet effective modification to your braking system. So let's take a look at some of these these items that I've got on the table. So these are the Magura MT5 quad piston brakes. They are absolutely phenomenal when it comes to power. Um, like I said, there's not many brakes, and I've tried a lot of brakes, um, which and some of them obviously include um, guides um, in various specs. And I've tried Shimano Saints. I've done Shram's um, cross country style brakes. I've used Hopes. And all of them kind of left me a bit underwhelmed, if I can uh, if I can say that. And not knocking any of those brakes, each and every person has their own personal preference. I like a brake that stops me on the dime. And me being a slightly heavier person, these are really important to me. So I chose the Magura MT5s purely on the basis um, that they were relatively inexpensive comparatively to, for instance, like Shimano Saints, which are more than double the price. Um, and I really, really enjoyed them until I had a crash. Now, if you have a look at these brakes, they're a really unique sort of design but the entire body of this braking lever is made out of a material called carbo texture and carbo texture is a really fancy word for plastic so if you're hurtling down a trail and you go head over the handlebars and you have a massive crash nine times out of ten you're gonna end up breaking this if you hit this brake lever. Luckily, you don't end up snapping these things because on the MT5s, they actually have aluminum ones, but you can actually see where I've nicked them against trees and things like that. Hasn't been, the, they've, they've been abused basically. <laughs> so, if it's not the, if it's not the brake lever, I mean, what, where are you getting all the power from? So this is the actual caliper. So this is the MT5 caliper. Again, like I said, you've got quad piston brakes, which I don't know if you can see very clearly on there. And um, quite a bulky single piece design as well. So it looks like it's just machined out of one single piece of metal. Um, and what I find with these ones is that um, when you really yank on the levers, I mean, they've got enough power to skid your front wheel, which is uh, it's quite frightening when that actually does happen. But at the same time, they've got absolutely fantastic modulation. I think in the end, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, modulation is a really fancy word for uh, non-sharp brakes, but I mean, please don't hold me to that. <laughs> so, I know this conversion works, um, but I just want to show you guys how to do it. So, I've looked at a few articles online, and one of the, the, big, the big pros of using a Shimano brake is that they've got a really solid and robust lever feel when you pull them it's a very um you can feel a very distinct biting point when you pull the levers and they feel durable in your hands and that's what shimano are very well known for the only problem is shimano is is that they are sometimes slightly erratic uh with in terms of when they grab the brakes they it's either you're 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 pressing them or they just grab your brakes and end up locking them up so i decided 
Seeing as everyone who's done this Shigura conversion, which I'm going to show you how to do now, has used expensive levers, I was like, I don't want to spend a lot of money on something which may or may not work well for me. So I just got these cheap, I think they're Shimano Altus um, braking system, or brake levers, and um, I use them on my bicycle at the moment. Currently, I have a Magura MT2 caliper on there, so I know this conversion actually will work. However, the reason why I've got one of these on there at the moment is because I increased the travel of my fork and my hose was slightly too short. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to make this break again. So, here's another tip and pointer. I'm actually doing this for the very first time. So, because my hose was too short, the MT5 uses banjos like this. You cannot connect a normal hose to it. So unfortunately, I thought this was a lost cause and I had to buy a whole new brake hose for this, which retails for around about 35 pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot. But bear in mind, at the time when I bought these, these were only 75 pounds. So literally half the price of a, of, of, of a new brake. So I was a bit hesitant to actually fix this and hence why I stuck with the MT2 setup. So let's have a look. I ordered a banjo fitting off of Amazon, which took a really, really, really long time to get here. However, I have actually got it and it does look very similar to the Magura one. If you can see that. So you've got two O-rings inside there and then you've got the banjo fitting there. So I'm just gonna dismantle this right now. Take this out. And that pops out. There's nothing wrong with that bolt. And you can see basically, these are non-reusable. You can see on there you've got an O-ring on that side and you have an O-ring on that side. Now hopefully, I haven't even actually measured these up yet, but if they are the same size, we are going to be in luck. And they look virtually identical. You can see over there. Cool. So let's go on with it. We've got our banjo fitting. We have all of our other parts inside here. Basically, I'm doing the other end of a braking system on this. What's the most common practice is actually putting, um, cutting the lever end and fitting um, the Magura parts um, or fitting the Shimano lever to the Magura um, lines. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I've had very varying sort of successes with that and a lot of people online don't actually show you this but when you put a Shimano um, parts inside a Magura hose, the fittings don't always mash up properly inside the lever. And so when you're compressing the olive inside there, it sometimes gets crushed skew. And I it happened quite a few times and I was, and I ended up nipping quite a few bits off of my um, hose while I was doing that, which was very, very frustrating. So let's get to the nitty gritty. So basically you need a few tools here. You can see I've got, I've grabbed quite a few tools over here. I've got the original uh, Magura pad spacers over here. So I'm going to stick those inside the caliper when I'm going to bleed them, which is fine. 
stick those in there like that. The tools that you're gonna need is, if I can pick this thing up, small spanner, it's normally a six millimeter or an eight millimeter. It depends on which model you actually use. Let's just check. Okay. Talk about an epic fail. I had to actually leave the room to go get an eight millimeter. <laughs> so let's remove this from the caliper. So once you do this, you're going to introduce air into the hose. Now a lot of people will do this on the bicycle. I'm doing this so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna unscrew this off of there, like this. Okay, so the caliper is loose now. And now we have the hose, as you can see over here. Let's focus on that. So now what we want to do is, we want to clip the end of this off because this is in a banjo fitting and it will not fit, well actually, it will actually fit into the caliper, but the angle and the position of it will put that straight out into the wheel, as you can see. So I want to take this off of there. So. to use my cutters these are actually electrical stripping cutters the reason why I use these is because they're actually the sharpest ones I have in the house and just nip the end of that off right so now as you can see we've got a blank hose at the end of this I'm just going to squeeze that so that it flattens it out a little bit. Cool. And now we can actually have a look at introducing our new fitting. So this pops off like that. You're going to have the olive on there. So pop this over your line like that we are going to put the olive over there like that and just push that nicely onto with a bit of force I might need to tap that a little bit because that's not sitting flush Okay, so we're sitting flush on there now. And now we can pop that on there on the end like that. And we can screw this all together, which is wonderful. And I'm so happy this looks like a very simple process. And unfortunately, like I said, these are not very readily available. Funny enough, now this actual fitting is smaller on, seems smaller than an eight. It is, I'm not sure what size that is. That's a seven, what a weird size. But anyway, I'll take our seven millimeter and then just be gentle with this now because obviously you don't want to damage this, but tighten this up from the inside so that the olive inside there tightens up and not over tighten it just so that it nips up on there and as easy as that you now have a banjo fitting fitted onto the end of our brake hose so now obviously we need to attach this 
put our o-rings on top of here like this both sides and then we are going to attach it back onto the caliper so you can see there's a hole over there I'm going to put my screw inside here like this over there like that and then what we can do is we can actually reattach this onto our brake hose cool so basically what we've done is we've created a quad piston brake. I haven't touched the end with the handle on there, which is brilliant because that's been my absolute bane in my life, getting that right. So now here comes the most important bit about this whole Shigura conversion. What fluid do I use? Magura uses royal blood which is a very low viscosity hydraulic oil and shimano uses a normal mineral oil which is very i mean i've got a generic one which i got at halfords but which one do you use because you've got a shimano lever but a magura brake and so this was also trial and error as well. So when I first put it in, I bled it with royal blood. Um, and my logic behind it was, was that I didn't want my pistons to seize up or react really slowly on the, on, on when I'm braking. And so I bled it with royal blood. However, what I found was was the royal blood was not viscous enough to withstand the seals on this braking lever and so what happened was I was getting bypass of oil actually through the lever so when I was pulling the lever I would get a good biting point and then it was, I would lose it like a really poorly bled brake so I was like, this isn't going to work. I'm trying to make a brake which is more powerful, more usable, and with better modulation. And so what I did was, I mixed them. So then I had a mixture of royal blood and mineral oil. And that seemed to work okay. Um, I didn't have as much inconsistency of the brake. Um, but it still didn't quite feel the way I wanted it to, or the way it should do. Um, it didn't feel very modular like a, like the Magura brake feels, with the slight flex in the carbon texture. And it didn't feel as solid as a Shimano brake either. And I then bled the brake again, and I bled it with pure mineral oil, and that seemed to be... The magic trick. Um, the caliper wasn't affected at all in the slightest by having the more viscous mineral fluid inside there um, and I got that that really solid bite point that you get from a Shimano brake with better modulation so what I found was is that I was able to um, feel where the bite point was on this without yanking on the lever which I ten tended to do with my Maguras because what was happening on really steep descents it almost felt like there wasn't any power behind it but I think that was down to the fact that the, there was actually a lot of lever flex and um, the brakes didn't feel that powerful they were actually working very well it just it, it didn't inspire a lot of confidence when I was doing really fast and steep descent. With this conversion, 
with the Shimano lever and like I said I mean this whole video is to point out the fact that you don't need to buy an expensive XT SLX or Saint lever to do this conversion I actually find this lever absolutely phenomenal because it's a double finger braking lever and I have it pushed quite far inboard which which then obviously like when my one finger is on the end of this lever I've got a massive amount of leverage on it so the amount of power that, that creates is, is phenomenal obviously it doesn't look as trick and, and fancy as everybody else's levers on their bicycles but like I said um, sometimes it's about bling but most of the time that you buy these parts and components it's actually for their performance and their attributes they give you so let's talk about the bleeding process now so I don't have this on a bicycle and um, most of you will go well Kareem it's probably better that you bleed this on a bicycle and you know what it may be the case however I don't really have issues with bleeding brakes and these brakes are very very easy to bleed and I think they're made easier because of obviously the, the fact that it's got a Shimano lever now so I'm just gonna find a bit which goes in the top here so, use my little trusty multi-tool let's pop the cap off of there So now that we've got our bleed port open at the top, I'm going to put in our Shimano bleeding part. Screw that in the top. There you go. To see our bleeding parts open at the top now. Cool. Just put that on this as well. And now we need to get our syringe filled over here with some mineral fluid. So we'll just pop that open. Okay, I just fill my syringe up. You can see there's some air bubbles in there at the moment. Just make sure when you bleed them that the air bubbles stay up at the top. So hold your lever facing downwards like this so that you don't push the air bubble or introduce it into the braking system. Okay, so let's have a look now. I'm take my Magura brake. And we're going to pop the bleed port open on the side. Nice thing about these Maguras is actually the size of the torque head on there is the same size as the disc rotor. So you don't need to keep buying tools for these things, which is absolutely wonderful in my opinion. Because yes, you can never have enough tools, but when you're looking for the right one, a universal one's always more handy. So that pops open like that. Now I'm going to insert this into the back end of my Magura brake.
Okay, so now that we've got our bleed port inserted over there, we can have a look at our brake. Like I said, it's not a, a major thing. It is quite easy to do this on the bicycle. I live in a flat, so this is the easiest way for me to do it. So once the bleed port's open, we're gonna push it through. As you can see, if you have a look closely, it's a whole load of air bubbles coming straight through there. Okay, you still see a bit of the, now what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to lock that off and then I'm going to press the lever, give it a bit of a flick. try and do is be very careful when you do this I just put a bit of vacuum on this so I'll open this up again and there goes the Magura lever I'll open this up pull a bit of vacuum on it if there's any air bubbles in there now you don't want to pull it too tight because normally what happens is, as you can see over there, see that's coming into focus, you're just pulling a whole load of air out of there, which you definitely don't want. So this is a little bit of a messy process, especially when your tools are leaking a little bit, like these ones seem to be. I've refilled my um, syringe up again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush it again, and just push it through there. still getting some air bubbles coming out of there basically what you want to do is you want to get a fantastic bead on this and I think we're sorted now I don't see any air bubbles coming out anymore so what we want to do is we want to lock this off we want to put your plug in here like this over there Cool. And then normally what I'll do is I'll take this off first. I'll take that off first because just before, when I do take these off, sometimes you lose a little bit of mineral fluid in there. Anyway, so you can see there that's nicely tucked up to the top of the brim there. I'm going to put the cap back on here again. Oops, easy. 
like this. Just make sure that's nipped up. It doesn't have to be super tight. It just needs to be nipped up on there. And then we are going to replace the bleed port screw and the caliper. So now, obviously the best thing to do, what I find is, is just you want to seal the ports up because it gives you the best chance of not getting losing fluid so once you seal one end off it's very unlikely that it'll leak because it actually creates its own vacuum on there and we'll just tighten that up cool so that's basically done now obviously it is probably a lot more convenient to do this on a bicycle it doesn't really phase me at the moment so let's just i've got these bleed blocks in there let's give the lever a bit of a Fill. I believe it feels pretty good. Pretty good. A nice and solid lever. Cool. So all you need to do is, once you've completed this process, take your bleed blocks out, use a bit of disc brake cleaner, clean your whole caliper. Now obviously, I didn't actually mention this in the start of the video, but you should actually take your brake pads out of here because it does get messy sometimes. Obviously you don't want contamination in your brake pads. It doesn't matter how powerful your brakes will be. If they have got oil on it, they're going to be absolutely useless. So once you've completed this process, spray this with this brake cleaner. You can use clash and, clash and brake cleaner like a normal car one. Something with a high alcohol content so isopropyl alcohol things like that will also do pretty well wipe all your um, parts down and then you can reinstall your brakes and your brake pads on there um, like i said once you do this conversion best thing to do is and this is from my own personal experience uh, it may feel good in the beginning check that there's no leaks on here or here depending on which end you're cutting off because it will feel good in the beginning but if your banjo fittings and your olives haven't mated correctly um, they will start leaking you will lose fluid and then obviously lose braking performance and eventually lead to complete failure of your brakes but obviously just regularly check that what i normally do is once i've done my brakes like this especially with the shigura conversion I'll take it outside, give it some hard yanks on the brake, obviously to increase the pressure on them to check if there's any um, parts which have sealed but not sealed correctly. You'd obviously notice it quite, uh, quite quickly then if anything hasn't sealed properly. But overall guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it has been a messy one but I needed to do this. I thought I'd just film this really quickly and you can actually see two processes, how to bleed your brakes um on a coffee table and then also how the shigura conversion works and is it a viable option so i can tell you in my personal experience this is the by far the best brakes that i've ever used i'm sure there are other brakes out there like um trick stuff's brakes which look absolutely amazing but value for money you know 500 pounds a brake is uh, is quite a steep price. So I believe, like, I mean, the only comparable brake that I feel that's come kind of close to this is the Code RSCs. Uh, but again, they don't have that pure grunt of this brake once you've got a sugar, once the sugar conversion is set up correctly. Um, so Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Leave some comments below and let me know what you think. Obviously, my methods are a bit, uh, bit strange, but I want you to see what I was actually doing here rather than hiding it on levers and things like that.
Thanks for watching.